Hi, I'm Wes Gollum, the Energy Geek, and today we're going to be talking about a unique battery storage system. You know, one of the limiting factors to the development of solar and wind has been what to do when the sun doesn't shine or when the wind isn't blowing. Presently, net metering and battery storage are the two options. Batteries are expensive, and if you net meter, which means you put your excess power onto the grid, running your meter backwards, when the grid goes out, you lose power too. They can't have you pumping power onto the grid when a lineman's trying to fix it. Chris Milner's company, Univix Power Solutions, has built a solar generator which could power most homes for more than a day. And it can be recharged by solar panels in a power outage, even if you net meter. I found this so interesting that I wanted to go check it out. I'm with Chris Milner, principal of Univix Power Solutions. Welcome. So when we first created our products, we had a few goals in mind. A few of the problems in the industry were one, it wasn't cost effective. All the energy storage industry was in one category, and that was the wealthy category. People that can afford the really high-end vehicles, mm -hmm. uh, high-end electric cars, large houses, that kind of market. Nobody was really looking at the blue-collar market, the everyday person that wants to walk into a home store and buy a, a generator to have installed at their home, which averages between nine and 13000 for an installation. All of the solar storage systems that were out there currently were in excess of $20,000. So it really eliminated that entire market, which is a very, very large market. The U.S. generator market alone is over $3.9 billion annually, just to put that in perspective. So the first thing we wanted to do is we wanted to make it affordable for everybody. The other problem with the energy storage market is they're really incredibly hard to install. Most of them take multiple electricians several days. They have to haul in multiple boxes into your home, hang everything on the wall, and then interconnect it all. So we wanted to simplify that. We wanted to make it so that just one single electrician could do an installation in just a matter of hours instead of days. Mm -hmm. And then the third biggest problem with the energy storage industry is the fact that most of the batteries in all the energy storage systems out there are lithium, which cannot be recycled. If it can't be recycled, it's not a green product. Now, it's partially recyclable, 35%, mm -hmm. But it costs 10 times as much to recycle as it does to make a new one, so nobody is doing it. These are just sitting in fields and warehouses and stacking up, including the ones from electric vehicles. So if we wanted to use a battery technology that was 100% recyclable. Now came the bank. We designed the bank on a powered wheel drive system, so you can literally turn the throttle and drive it to where you need it to go. So now, even though it's heavy, it does come in at 900 pounds, one single electrician can now drive this in the back of his utility vehicle, bring it to the job site, drive it around the back of the home or into the garage or wherever it needs to go, and it only takes one person to do it. We made it so it fits through a 36 inch door, so it'll easily go into a walk-in, it can be driven down into a bulkhead because it has brakes on it, Hmm. Well, it takes one person to do all that. To solve the problem of recyclability, we made sure that not only all the products we used in there were recyclable, but we used a recyclable battery. Our battery is not lithium. Our battery is carbon technology. Carbon is nothing more than sand. The key problem with batteries on the market, with conventional battery systems, lead acid, AGMs, is that when they sit in a state of discharge overnight, they sulfide up. They came up with a cool, friendly term for desulfiding them called equalization. It's really just desulfiding the battery. It puts a high voltage into the battery and burns the sulfur off of the plates because the sulfur will stick to the lead plates in the battery. What carbon battery did was replace the lead plates with carbon composite plates. Carbon, which is graphite, just like what's inside of a mm -hmm. pencil, is very slippery. So it's like a no-stick pan. The sulfur can't stick to the plates in the first place, 
therefore the battery doesn't sulfide up, and you get a really long life out of it. Our battery that we use has a 15 year design life and the same cycles as a lithium, which gave us the ability to not only offer a lower cost for our product, but gave us the ability to have something that was 100% recycled. We're gonna use our fan here to indicate power or whatever you're backing up in your home. The way our bank product works, it's like a giant UPS. It's plugged into your utility here. And then from the output, we go to your loads, whatever you want to back up in your house. When your main power goes down, it's instantaneous. Your loads never stop running. They don't even know that power went out. Everything continues to run as normal. When power is restored, instantly flips right back and charges the battery back up. It's a seamless process. And unlike regular fuel-based generators, the UPS function also protects all the load that it's connected to, just like a UPS for your computer would. So basically, it's just a giant UPS for your house that can give you 24 hours of backup without solar or indefinite backup with solar. And we did it all at a cost that's affordable to everybody. The flagship product which you see here has a full retail of 10,000. After the federal incentive, which is currently 30%, it's only seven. And what's involved with installing that? Simply putting a twist lock plug on your main house panel like you see there. Mm -hmm. And then you take the loads you want to back out out of your main house panel and put them into the sub panel. And the sub panel can either have a twist lock plug attached to it like this, or what a lot of the uh, installers do is just permanently affix this cord to the sub panel. I see. Can this be used inside? This is indoor only. This is not an outdoor appliance, even though it looks like it would shed water. We did make it so it will shed water because we know, since it is technically a portable device and it is just two twist lock plugs, people can disconnect the plugs and put them together to keep their house running and then they can roll them in the backyard for a wedding for the day so they don't have to run a generator for the DJ. So since we know it's going to be used for things like that or maybe transported up to a camp for a weekend, mm -hmm. we did make it so that it'll shed water in the event that you accidentally bring it through rain conditions. Got it. But it is not it's not designed for it. It is an indoor only appliance. How much storage is in this? 18.2 kilowatts. Wow. None of the generators can do the whole house anymore. With the 2019 electrical codes, you can't hook a generator to your whole house panel that can't support that entire panel. Mm -hmm. So therefore, you're still going to be running just your emergency loads that you can put into your sub panel the generator will support. This does have a 30 amp output. Mm -hmm. So it can support a significant amount of loads. Got it, it. It compares to like a 20 kilowatt Generac as far as a whole house generator goes. Uh -huh. Because that also has a 30 amp output continuous. It's capable of running emergency loads. That's what it's designed for. The average house uses 23 kilowatt hours a day of normal energy and normal operation year round. Mm -hmm. But when you're under emergency conditions, you're not going to be baking a turkey in the microwave or running your jacuzzi. So if you take those things out and run just your essentials, you only use between 11 and 15 kilowatt hours a day. And this has 18.2, so it gives you greater than 24 hours of backup under those conditions. Mm -hmm. Do you generally install it with, on people's houses that don't have solar already and, the, and add panels? It's about 50-50. Mm -hmm. um, most of our, we, we sell through dealers and the majority of our dealers Half the ones they put in don't have solar, and half the ones they put in do. It really depends on how the person is going to be using it. A lot of the places that this go, especially in the New England area, are in snowbirders' houses, maybe around the lake. They're covered around with trees. They don't have a good house for solar. But they but want the But the biggest problem they have is when they're sitting down in Florida, mm. the power goes out, and their generator doesn't start because a mouse got in there and beat on the circuit board. So it's one of many things that causes regular generators to fail. Battery doesn't, mm -hmm. you know, dies and doesn't start it. Uh, fuel is corrupt. They're out of fuel. All kinds mm -hmm. of things that can happen when you're not there. So they can just put this in the basement instead, set it and forget it. 
it's got a 15 year design life on the batteries. So for the next 15 years, I don't have to worry about anything. Those that choose to do solar, there's many different types of solar systems out there. Mm. Ours is a true off-grid product, so we designed ours to operate with solar in an off-grid situation if need be. So you can plug your panels directly into our product. So is there a way to wire that so that when the grid goes out, there's the separation between me and the grid and now connection to this? Exactly like it's wired now. This would be the way it operates, and then you would just add solar right into the solar inputs right here. There's, 100, right. there's a 120 amp solar charger built on board. So you can put up to seven kilowatts of solar onto this directly without the use of any outboard chargers or anything. And that will allow you to run off-grid in emergency scenario when the power is out. There's also a new system from, from Enphase. It's called the smart panel and the smart switch. What, the way that works, you have to have the newer IQ7 or 8 microinverters, but with that microinverter system, now you can not only be backfeeding the grid to negate all the electric you use, but when your power goes out, it microgrids, so the entire array comes back on. During the day, you're running your house as normal. Mm -hmm. Say you have 30 panels, Got you it, have yeah. about 40 amps of service coming in. So you can run as normal. You don't have to run on emergency loads. You can do your laundry, you can run your hot plate. You can run as, as normal because you have plenty of mm -hmm. power coming in. It still continues to keep the battery charged. Mm -hmm. So now you're only using your battery at night. Mm -hmm. You make it through the night, you have to be more conservative at that point because you know you're on battery. Then during the day, you can run as normal mm -hmm. again. So with a system like that, you can run indefinitely. That's cool. That's very cool. Amazing. So one of the most important things to us as a company, if we're going to be a green energy company, we want it to be truly green. Mm -hmm. Most of the companies out there that produce green energy products are not. They're far from it. By doing that, we want to make sure that everything that comes into this factory goes back out of this factory. We'll start with our battery. Our battery comes in a cardboard box. Inside that box are two pieces of this styrene. And normally, most manufacturers would just throw this in the garbage, filling the landfills with all kinds of styrene. We collect it up until we have enough of it for them to come and pick it up, and then tiny home manufacturers come and pick this up and use it as the insulation inside the walls of the tiny home. Cool. Our inverters come in these wood crates with metal bound corners. We take all the metal and the screws off of those and recycle that most of the screws go to local craft shops and the metal goes in to be recycled. The pallets actually go to other local businesses to use for their small shipping needs. And the plywood that these are made of is actually a quarter inch thick finished birch plywood. So we donate that to all the local schools for their woodshop programs and they use it for all their crafts. The inverters come packaged with four pieces of this foam. We designed the shipping crates, which you can see at the other end of the building here, so that when we roll our product into that shipping crate, these four pieces of foam go on the four sides of the product. So they actually hold the product into the shipping crate perfectly. So it comes in, goes right back out. We don't have to buy any shipping materials. Our upper chassis are molded right over a PSI molding in Wolfboro. This is a painted part on the top, so they have to ship it to us in a poly bag. You see it here. We have them oversized the poly bag. It's twice the size needed. The reason for that is when we go to finally ship this product and put it in the crate, the bag now fits over the entire product. So again, it comes in, goes right back out. Not only does it save us money because we don't have to buy a bag for our shipping and packing, but we're repurposing and reusing it as well. The display that goes into our product ships to us in a small box. We intentionally 
didn't have any labeling put on the box. We just had this little small sticker put on here. Mm -hmm. The reason we did that is now we have local shops and stores. There's a couple of jewelry stores and a craft store that come and pick up all these white boxes so they can use it for their e-commerce to ship all their product around. Mm -hmm. And again, we get to repurpose this so it gets a good use. Our lower chassis here, which you see on our assembly line, they come stacked up with bubbles in between them so that they don't scratch each other. Mm -hmm. We get two sheets like this. We use one sheet inside of our accessory boxes you see over there, which houses all our accessories that come with the unit. Mm -hmm. We use one sheet for that. We end up with a remaining sheet that we don't have to use, so we bag all these up. Our local stores come and pick them up to use them for their shipping needs. I bet we they like you. For other shipping needs that we have. Sure. So we have plenty of that left over. All of the cardboard that comes in gets recycled because cardboard is still being recycled in New Hampshire. Mm -hmm. So that's one of the things we can definitely uh, just get recycled. And even the plywood from our larger creative products, such as our axles that go underneath our unit, mm -hmm. even this gets repurposed and reused. Generally with that, we stack it up until we have a bunch of it. And all we have to do is put a listing on Craigslist and somebody can use it that's building a shed or mm -hmm. you know, patching a sure. hole in the wall or anything like that. It, it, it generally always gets picked up within a couple of days. 65% of the volume of our product is US based. Mm -hmm. So we're purchasing that product in the US. Out of that 65%, about 35% of it comes from New Hampshire. Oh, great. So we're trying to buy as much locally as we Excellent. can. Excellent. If we can't buy it local, we try to mm -hmm. branch out, and get it as close as we possibly can. And from there, we do have to buy some things overseas, but unfortunately we don't make electronics in this country anymore, so that all has to come from overseas. And that's Great. About it. Thank you very much. This is really interesting. You're welcome. Best of luck. For more information about the solar generator, contact Chris Milner at Univix Power Solutions. And if you found this video interesting, I'd appreciate it if you would like it and subscribe to my Energy Geek channel, where you can find more informative videos about sustainable energy and high performance buildings. I'm Wes Gollum, the Energy Geek. Thanks for watching.